Hello AP Calculus PC students, Mr. Record here for video number two over topic 9.2. We're all talking about parametric equations and finding second derivatives, and in this case some slope and some concavity. And I'm loving this video so much that I brought my kittens along here because this is such a great video. It's going to be pretty short and we're going to be able to merge some ideas from Calc AB with some Calc BC. Let's take a look. What we have in example two, it says, for the curve given by x equals square root of two and y equal one fourth quantity t squared minus four for t greater than or equal to zero, find the slope and the concavity at the point two, three. Now, you might be wondering, well, wait a minute. I see the graph of this parametric equation. What the heck, right? Why, why do we need to do the analysis? Well, I wanted the graph there so that you can back up our findings. So it's very likely that if this problem is presented to you, you wouldn't necessarily have the graph and you probably wouldn't have a graphing calculator that you could use to confirm. So you really have to know your calculus here. So notice there are two things that we have to do, slope and continuity. We really would logically go after the slope first because we have to know that slope is tied to the first derivative dy dx. Once we find dy dx, we can move about our business and then we could go into the continuity part because if we remember a little bit from calculus AB at the beginning of the course, we know that the continuity aspect of a curve is tied to its second derivative. So Let's start by taking the first derivative. Now, remember in parametric, the first derivative, dy over dx is defined as dy over dt divided by dx over dt. So we would start by taking the derivative of this y curve, which has a 1 fourth constant in front that I'll just drop down. And then I just take the derivative of t squared minus 4, pretty easy enough. And then I divide that by the derivative of the square root of t. You've probably taken that derivative many times by now. Maybe you're at a point where you can simplify it nicely. It turns out that it's 1 half t to the negative half, but the way that we like to write it simplified is 1 over 2 root t. At this point, we can do a little simplifying here. I notice that this numerator can become t over 2 and then I can multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. At this point, the t, the twos, the twos are going to cancel, and the t's stay as they are, and you've got t square root of t. Of course, you can write that as t to the three halves, which I would have to say I would recommend, especially moving on into the second derivative. But as far as finding out what the slope is, we can leave it either way because we've got just a, a tad bit more work here to do based on that. And that is we don't have a t value. All right. Pretend that you don't see the t value in the picture. So what we're going to have to do is figure out what value of t are we going to be uh, evaluating this for. And all we know is that we're at the point 2, 3 when that value of t occurs. So you can do one of two things. You can take your x equation and replace the x with the x coordinate of that ordered pair, in this case 2 equal square root of t, and solve for t, which, wow, that was quick. Or if you didn't like that, you could have taken the y coordinate as well. Now make sure that the y coordinate gets plugged in for the other equation. Now, if all goes well, this should give us the same answer. So let's check this out. If you multiply the 4 over, and then if we add 4 over, you guys are going to see that you're going to get t is equal to plus or minus 4. But remember, our restriction on t from the very outset was t has to be positive or 0. So we have the same value for t. If, if you didn't have the same value for t, you've got a problem. You've probably made a mistake in one or both of the equations. 
it's really up to you if you want to take that extra time to see if they match because it is a great way to verify. I recommend it if you've got the time. So basically what we're going to do to finish up this problem is to figure out, okay, well what is the slope or what is the value of dy dx when t is 4 and we just basically plug 4 into the t square root of t or now 4 square root of 4 and of course we get 8. And I think we saw from our picture that the slope is indeed going to be 8 there. This light blue line, very steep slope, definitely steep, is going to have a value of 8. Let's move on to our second derivative now. So to take the second derivative, remember that the notation is d2y over dx2, and you start off by taking the derivative of dy dx. Notice it's already in terms of t, that's wonderful. We might want to think about using the t to the 3 halves version. So we'd have 3 halves t to the 1 half. But that alone is not going to give you your second derivative. You have to remember to divide it by your original dx dt, which was the denominator of dy over dx. Now it looks like we've got a hot mess going on here with this particular fraction, so we probably ought to work on that. How about I change this 3 halves t to the half as 3 square root of t all over 2, and then I can multiply by the reciprocal of that denominator, which is 2 square root of t all over 1, and I notice some twos cancel and some square root of t's multiply to make t to the first. And so that 3t is the most simplified version of our second derivative. We're going to finish up by evaluating that second derivative at the same time. Now that's what's nice in this case. We've already found that value of t so we don't have to do it anymore. And so plugging in 4 for this t obviously gives us 12. Now, you don't want to stop here and say, hey, the concavity is 12. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Concavity is either concave up or concave down, or I suppose neither. Right? If you have a straight line, you don't have concavity either way. If you have a positive second derivative, which indeed is what we have here, we need to connect that to the idea of concave up. And we're only really asking, you know, what, what's the story at the point 2 comma 3. It's not on the interval. So see my, my preposition, I use the symbol for at so that we wouldn't get confused on that being an interval 2 to 3. Although it's very likely that this curve probably is concave up on 2 to 3. It looks like it's going to be concave up almost always. But it's good to make sure that we answer the question that's being asked. What's the concavity at the point 2, 3? And certainly our graph does corroborate that result. Anyway, hope this find, I hope you find this uh, useful, and we'll see you next time.